Morph brings some wonderful effects to photos, especially when tessellated or tiled. Here's a lovely sequence of tiled photos, which, with Morph, can move around to reveal different parts of the image in a key message tile. To create this effect, the images have been positioned in a tile arrangement on the first slide, and then moved and recropped on the second slide. To understand precisely how this works, it may be worth a brief mention of how crop works in PowerPoint. Typically, you'd think of the crop function found on the picture format tab on the ribbon over on the right-hand side as a way to remove parts of an image, which it does. You can use the black grab handles to cut off the image, but as you do it, you'll see that the rest of the image is still there, just greyed out and hidden from view. So it's probably better to think of the crop tool as creating a window through which you can see the image underneath. That means that you're using the black grab handles to change the size of the window. And it means that you can use the white grab handles to change the size of the image. For example, making it larger or smaller, or moving it around. The size of the window stays the same, but the level of detail or area of the underlying picture you see changes. You can choose how to crop the images to create different panning or zooming effects. Moving or resizing the image significantly in the crop window means that the image will appear to move or zoom more quickly, whereas only a slight shift in position or size will result in a nice, gentle movement. And moving the crop window, but not the underlying image, will give the effect of tracking across the image. Back to the tiled images example, the morph transition moves the image crop windows to their new position on the slide but also changes the view through the window, which is why you get the effect of the images moving, but also changing focus, panning and zooming, as we've altered both the position and size of the crop windows, as well as the position and size of the underlying images. For example, the waves image at the bottom has a fairly small crop window through to a much larger image. On the first slide, the crop window is focused on just the bottom left of the photo. And on the second slide, the image is moved within the crop window just a small amount, so the window focuses slightly to the right and slightly higher up the image. It means a nice, slow movement. But alternatively, if you change the position of the image in the crop window on the second slide, so that now it focuses up at the top, then during the morph transition, the image moves much more quickly, as it has to cover a greater distance in the same amount of time. Small tweaks like this can really change the results you get, so think carefully about them. If you're particularly eagle-eyed, you'll notice that during the transition, there are gaps as the tiles move and shift. Each of the images in each of the sets of tiles is a full standalone tile. There are no overlaps. That means that when they all move, parts of the background are revealed before being covered again. To turn it up to 11 and avoid any gaps, you have to think about how everything moves and layer the images so that there's always something covering every part of the slide, even during the movement. In this second version of the same sequence, you can see that no gaps appear as the images move, which is achieved by expanding some of the images and carefully layering them so that as the visible parts of the images move, there is always an image underneath. This overlapping gets more complex the more images you have, as you need to think about which images are going to cover or reveal others. But it results in an even more seamless effect that doesn't look anything like your traditional PowerPoint presentation. If juggling all those moving parts feels a bit too time-consuming, you can still achieve lovely effects with a static tile arrangement. And by simply changing the size or position of the images within the crop frame, you can get a beautiful looking sequence. In this case, it all happens pretty quickly, and it's a pleasing way to introduce a set of images. As an alternative, you could go to the Transitions tab on the ribbon, and over on the right, change the transition duration to something much longer so that it's a slow, steady, low-impact transition that adds a small amount of dynamism to a background, which might be useful for title slides at the start of a presentation or conference. With a combination of simple techniques, you can certainly create quite a range of very beautiful effects.